Camila Cabello is dropping some truth bombs when it comes to her friendship with Taylor Swift. Lasso of truth. I was like, Lasso what are you truth. about to do? Lasso of truth. You guys, the 22-year-old singer was on the uh, the Power of Young, Young Hollywood, Hollywood issue for Variety, talking about everything from her upcoming sophomore album to Shawn the Mendes, Mendes, which we'll get into, and of President course... Trump. Yes, immigration, everything. But what really caught our eye is her comments about why she chose to speak out in defense of her good friend Taylor Swift mm -hmm. after, of course, as you remember, earlier this summer in July, Taylor's masters were sold to Scooter Braun. It was the drama heard around the world. And a much larger sale of Big Machine Records, right. which owns her recordings. Right. Yeah. So Camila defended her um, sticking up for Taylor, and she said the reason why she did it is because she is my friend. And someone in her position, which is like on another level, I can't imagine how many times she's been let down by people what is else? Oh, or has got disappointed right. by friends who were just using her or people who just wanted to be friends with Taylor Swift or whatever. Obviously kind of alluding to the fact that a lot of people might use certain people who have that status of Taylor Swift level. Certainly in the business, and Taylor has always talked about the friendships, how much that the, mm -hmm. those particular friendships, especially in the business, mean to her. Right. And Camila herself has talked about how she idolized Taylor for so long. Oh. And so to be in that inner circle mm -hmm. is something clearly she did not take lightly. She tells about Taylor in this Variety yeah. cover shoot, she says that Taylor is the reason why she fell in love with songwriting. And I think that's part of the reason why she went to bat for Taylor mm -hmm. when this all went down. You know, she says that, and also I feel like this was an opportunity for Camila to prove to Taylor what a real friend she is. In fact, she went on to tell Variety, I'm happy to be there for her as a person. Like, even when it's not popular, I've got you. I'm like your real friend. And that's so important, even when it's not popular. Obviously, when all of this drama went down, people were tweeting or posting the Insta story, mm. being very blunt about whose side they yes, were on. Yes, I was going to say they were picking sides. And Camila made her stance known that mm -hmm. she was on Team Taylor. I want to pull up her original tweet from the beginning of July. She says, I don't know a lot about what's going on. This is one of the news first broke, but I will say I really believe artists should own their life's work. And that's why I think she even felt like empowered to send this tweet because mm -hmm. one, she is Taylor's friend, but two, she's also a fellow right. female artist in the business. And you know? she doubled down right. on that tweet and her beliefs on the, the stance that artists should own their own work. With some expletives. With some expletives. Okay. And she she feels a certain way. To Variety with the scooter thing, I feel her frustration getting effed over like that and not being able to have her masters, that sucks. When you think about how artists have to slave to make these things and then you don't own them, that is kind of a ridiculous concept. A, a ridiculous to uh, many of us and a lot of Taylor Swift fans too because they also were picking sides mm -hmm. during this whole thing, which prompted people like Bieber uh, and Demi mm -hmm. Lovato to kind of defend Scooter Braun yeah. too. And, and, and to be fair, the business is so convoluted. Like, it, to us, it seems right. obvious that artists would own their master recordings, but apparently that's right. not as uh, common as we think. But not just as an artist, she's supporting her because, like we said, BFF. she is a real friend. Which begs the question, guys, are we surprised that Camila defended Taylor um, and how impassioned she feels about the topic? Brianna, what do you think? Uh, no. No, it's not surprising at all. As her friend, of course, she's going to stick up for her friend. That makes sense, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, was, I would stick up for you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I mean, it's Taylor Swift. Why would you not come to the defense of Taylor Swift, you know? It's just like because we live in this... You know, stand culture where if you, you could speak be canceled out, for something, right? Say. People right. are gonna drag you for whatever you put out on Twitter or social media or whatever stance you take. But uh, and, and, and you know, obviously, it's a platform for people to voice their opinions and right. beliefs. But something like this can you know be a little div divisive. One hundred percent. I mean, we saw just on social media, you were kind of there was no in between with this one. You were mm. either Team Scooter or Team Taylor, and you know, at a, at a time where a lot of people were dragging Taylor because the entire truth wasn't out there. Right. It's nice to see that she did have people like Camila in her corner who were not afraid to speak so vocally and, and in public about this. Absolutely. And now homegirl's got Shawn Mendes in her corner, okay? <laughs> I was like, I was also reading through this feature to see what she had to say about Shawn. Not did, much. 
Not much, but you know what? She did give us enough, though, because she did talk about the how the collaboration and Senorita came about, and she says, I've known Sean for such a long time, and it's so much fun getting to work and do things with, wait for it, somebody who means, means a, a lot, lot to you. To you. Oh. Oh, she also talked about how, this was surprising to me, about how Senior Rita was, it took about eight months to mm. get this song, this music video, off the ground because I guess when Sean first went to her with the song, she loved it, wanted to be a right. part of it, and then she said she overthought it and then pulled out, and then they both went back and forth where it was like, I want to do it, oh no, I don't want to do it, I want to do it. Well, thank God I'm that so they did. Because look, I mean, look at the sparks right here. I mean, whoo! And now they're I possibly would. living this in real life. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I'm curious as to what kind of was the apprehension, what was the hesitation. Yeah. Was it because he kind of sold her on this whole concept before they even made the video? Like, right. it's going to be hot. It's going to be steamy. We're going to be and like... And maybe at that point, they were just platonic and didn't want to... Mm. Go that next right, level, right. even though they are both artists. It's a music video. You're it's true. pretending. But you know what I mean? I don't know. B, am I, do I make sense? Sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, she distracted by, by, by the Senorita music video. I don't think you're off on Those that, Those shirtless Sean shots. <laughs> I don't think you're not, because it's timing was everything. And, you know, obviously she was in the middle of a breakup, too, which she also kind of talks about. She talks about falling in love and how yeah. that inspired the next record. Because oh. at the time, as she was writing, she was in love. And I don't think it was with Sean. I think it was with her ex, Matt. Matthew. But oh, love. I meet mean, love, music, the biz. I'm here for it, all of it. Love, wouldn't know anything about it. Ah, well, how's this for romantic? Not to rub it in your face, Cassie, <laughs> yeah. but uh, Travis Scott, he didn't just give Kylie Jenner a bed of roses for her birthday. <laughs> he gave her a whole damn foyer. Okay, guys, did you see this on Kylie's Insta stories yesterday? Travis literally gifted her with all of these rose petals in their living room slash boy of the home. I think home. that's like right when you enter the home, yeah, because look at the stairs that go up, uh, you know, upstairs, obviously. Look Little Stormy, Stormy playing at all the flowers. I love that she that's a kid's dream. held up the card um, at the beginning and says, the card says from Travis, um, we're just getting started. started. And that was my thing. I go, I, I had to Google when is her actual birthday. Her birthday is not even until the 10th of August. The 10th. I mean, He's already getting it started. Honestly, Travis, you should write a book. Okay, because I think this is Clearly. so romantic. What do you guys think? Is this the most romantic thing you've ever seen? The most romantic gift? It wouldn't be the first time he's outdone himself for Flowers, her. Flowers, roses. I don't know. Like, is that is that romance to you? Uh, yes. Flowers uh, die just like love. Wow. <laughs> Damn, Kathy. You Cassie. are hardened. Tell Girl, us how you really feel. Uh, I think it's a very, very sweet gesture. And I'm talking about sweet. even just a bouquet. But, like, if you have the money to spend it and you're going to, like, literally shower her, like, literally shower her with roses, come on, that is sweet. How much money? Okay, yeah. And it's well, a surprise. I mean, I guess you have that money. She didn't know what was happening. But the question is, though, guys, who's going to clean this up? Who? <laughs> Who is going to clean this up? Because you're right, rose petals do die, for the record. You're right, that's a fact. <laughs> also, but... does her house smell like a funeral home now? Okay, I was going to say it smells like romance. <laughs> it smells like love. <laughs> Flower, roses smell good. Cass, I will buy you some roses, damn it. Oh, my God. You're waiting you did for my birthday. You're uh, the only man who's bought me flowers. Oh, my God. Back to my question, was that the most romantic gift? I forgot, for your birthday, not only did I buy you yeah. flowers, I brought them to the office on uh, Saturday because you were going to be working Sunday on your birthday, and they were at your desk waiting for you. Oh, my God. You should write a book. I really should. Not even Travis Scott. You should write a book. But, hey, you know what? Listen, you better take some notes out of a book that he could write because, listen, he sets the bar up here. So take notes for my next birthday, January 27th, you guys. He has gifted Kylie with, like, the most extreme gifts. I mean, even back at her 21st birthday, he did the roses, the roses. up the yep. staircase. Remember that? So Seems. he tops it this year. I mean, yes, that's... Very So romantic. what you're telling me, if, I can, if I'm going to take a page from Travis's book, I need to get you a vintage Rolls Royce for your birthday? A vintage, a modern, whatever you want to get. And <sighs> feel free to put that in my uh, apartment complex well, driveway. Well, you're going to have to be expecting to get this next gift for me uh, because he gifted <laughs> her as a push present after having Stormy. He got her a uh, $1.4 million Ferrari. Where's the car seat supposed to go? <laughs> I know. I love that that's a push present. <laughs> But the kid can't go in there. Stormy's right, not gonna ride in that. There's no way. <laughs> Thank you for pushing my kid out. Here's a Ferrari. Oh boy. Uh, something more up my alley, though. I mean, 
I'd feel like Batwoman driving this, not gonna lie. But something a little bit more up my alley, diamonds. You can never go wrong with diamonds. No. Remember when he surprised her with this diamond watch that literally is worth more than our lives combined? I honestly, <laughs> it, it, shakes, it shakes me to my core. Look like, at Like, it's this. just so expensive, I can't. Oh. Uh, well, as for Kylie's birthday plans this year, that remains to be seen. But last year for her 21st, you guys will remember, she had a Barbie-themed 21st birthday bash at Delilah. Mm -hmm. uh, she celebrated with friends and family. Everybody was there. It's so, like a diamond encrusted cake too. I know. <laughs> so 22, it's not as exciting as 21, but you know, the Kardashian Jenners don't do anything just small. So I nope. can't wait to see how she'll top herself <laughs> this year. Well, Kylie's ex Tyga might not be giving out roses, but he did pop up at Drake's OVO, OVO Fest, Fest last, last night. night. Oh my God, did you guys see this? Oh my God, it was all on social media because Drake literally brought out so many guests. Like it was Coachella, Stagecoach, everything combined 2.0. It should have been what his Coachella set was. I said it, I'm sorry. It was a bit of a snooze fest. Brianna, I know you were super excited about this one. Uh, tell us who some of the many guests were. There was like so many people. First, he brought out the baby. That was mm. like, well, first, actually, let's start. He couldn't forget the Raptors win. So this oh, is right. when he brought out the baby, of course, which everyone loves the baby. He's hot right now. He's on double XL freshman, um, freshman class right now. So he's really hot, but the first thing that he did was, of course, Drake had to give love wow. to Toronto and to the Raptors because he's still not over that big win yet. He never will be, even if and they look, win again next year. Does he get? Is there only one trophy? And he gets it. And like Drake has it. I guess it? he gets it. Yeah, maybe they just keep it at his house. I don't, I know. don't know. Not only does he have it right now, at least for the last night of uh, OVO Fest, but he also did this giant replica. Which is so insane. Yeah, he is uh, he is so lit still about oh, Raptors yeah. uh, winning the NBA Finals. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned there was a laundry list of people. Uh, besides the baby, like we mentioned, Tyga. Yeah, mm -hmm. Tyga was there. was there. He came out and he performed, uh, I think he performed his song Taste and some other things. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. who came out, he brought out YG. Uh, he did his song Loco. He brought out the mariachi band and everything. That's so <laughs> sick. That is so awesome. You, know, I love that. Yeah. Cardi B was even there. Yes, he brought wow. out Cardi. Also, she came out. She performed Press. I think she performed like Bodak Yellow. He wanted to bring out a lot of women. Also, mm. like yeah. he preface before he brought out Cardi and some other people he said I really want to bring out the women because the women right now are killing the game mm -hmm. in hip hop. Uh -huh. So after he brought out Cardi, he also brought out brought out Megan the Stallion. Yes. Which well, of course, I love that Cardi just popped off her heels side note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She he brought out Megan bothered. which of course like everybody Megan of course is super hot right now. So hot, yeah. Yeah. She's got a song coming out this weekend and he closed out the show with a fireworks show mm. actually to honor his friend Mark who passed away recently um, but yeah it was day two of the OVO fest and I mean he literally closed it out with a big bang <laughs> I mean do they do that in the desert for Coachella I mean they do <laughs> you, get, get you, get you get dirt in your face instead of a firework show we get some pyro you know but I will say I don't think we get that many guess, uh, guests I should say surprise guests in one set right. like that's how you do it so did, did the fans really not know any of those artists were gonna pop up no, no they wow. didn't know those people were coming they had God. no idea um, there was a fan who was like very overwhelmed when he saw all the people coming out in <laughs> right. the tweet we can show. I was going to go on a cardiac arrest if they brought out anybody else. Oh just... my god. Well yeah, it's like one person after the other. One it's person like... after. They brought out way more people too. I think I put it on the list that you guys Oh have. yeah, we got Jesus. Meek Mill, Rick Ross, Chris Brown, Offset, Offset Lil Baby, Gucci Mane, and so many more. Wow. I mean, did he have time to perform any of his own songs? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. You know what I'm saying? But that you know what? It's because again, not only is it, it is it his music festival? Yeah. It's Toronto. That's his hometown. So he's going to yeah. do it big. Always. And he's like claiming it that nobody better have another festival here because he's got it on lock. Truly does have it on lock. <sighs> all right, guys, moving on to our MVP, the most viral post. We all have them, whether they end up on Instagram or not. And I'm talking about those questionable photos of yourself that you just can't quit. Okay, you guys? Don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> it was a Twitter moment today. Uh, Twitter user, I'm your destiny, Braden Bauer. Posted a questionable photo Did you of say himself. Destiny? Yeah, I'm your density. Destiny. Oh, is it density? <laughs> okay. All right, my bad. My bad, Brayden. 
I'm your destiny, or density, <laughs> wow, density. <laughs> Question. Wow, I'm, I have two degrees. Uh, so he posted this photo of himself and said, show me a picture you have of yourself on your phone that's really effing stupid, but you'll never delete. Here's one of mine. The tweet garnered over 28,000 likes and hundreds of really hilarious responses. I went through <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, here's one of our favorites. This girl by the pool with the distorted dealership inflatable like her body. And then the person in the, the pool guy. Wait, what is that? It's distorted. Oh, it looks like she just like took the face to she, refine. It looks like Photoshop yeah. gone wrong. Yep. She wanted to look like one of those dealership inflatables. Here, I'll do it. Come back to me. Right I don't know what this one. Oh, the, the, uh, the outside. Yes, yeah, the, yeah, 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 the flailing arm tube man. That did. Yeah. My sister was at for Halloween once. It was really hilarious. <laughs> How about the other one? There's another one of a girl inside a tub with excessive foam <laughs> bubbles around her. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about this. I have a lot what, of questions. Is it a hot tub? Is Are it you recreating the pretty tub? woman scene? Yeah, what's going on? That Just looks never, like a dream. It does, right? <laughs> never delete that one. I, I, I get it. The big part about like why this has gone viral is because so many people have questions about it. And yeah. you showed me one of yours. And uh -huh. I, I literally have so many things to ask you about this photo that we're Let's gonna show, them show my everyone. Photo. Yeah! Okay. What happened? I know I took you to Stagecoach once, I'm but I don't not, remember you taking photos. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> this is uh, during Nashville Pride. Were you, did you genuinely not know that the photo was taken? Correct, I did not. I. But why are you holding onto your phone? Girl, so I have the same question, that's the thing. Oh, you know what, this are photo- Are you waiting for a call? By the way, I look beautiful sleeping for the yeah, record. Yeah, you do. He sleeps with Very you. elegant. I'm not, I'm not even embarrassed that I'm passed out. I'm embarrassed that I can't get, let go of my phone. No, my right. phone's in my hand, and it's, but, I, but I was responsible enough to, ch to plug it in and I charge think it. you may or may not have been in another state of mind there, given the uh, excessive water bottles <laughs> that were next to you. That you what are you talking like? about? I'm just staying hydrated. It's hot out there in Nashville. The humidity is There's next level. There's a lot level. of water there. You and gotta you keep guys, it right by uh, the bed. He's don't you beauty guys, and he's grace, everybody. <laughs> don't you guys have water by your bedside? Do not come for me uh, in my hydration. Speaking of beauty and grace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have okay, questions. This next one, you guys, I just know that I love you, that I was what? willing to put this on our show. Um, as you can see, I'm crying in this photo, photo because Why I was crying? um terrified. What happened was everyone knows I talk about it all the time. I have um I have veneers on my top teeth. So when I got them done, you have to put um temporaries on first and you you wear them for like 10 weeks oh. or not 10 weeks, not 10 weeks, uh like 10 days, days to get used to them so that you know you like the color, the size, yada yada yada. Uh you're not really supposed to bite into things because they're they're very loose. They're not they're just temporarily placed and on And the girls got to eat. Uh, well <laughs> This is why I've never had Chick-fil-A ever again. Uh, I bit into a Chick-fil-A sandwich, guys, and I literally heard, I heard my tooth come out. And this was 30 minutes before I was supposed to do a live show. And I'm not kidding. You. So I heard it, and then I looked into the mirror, and I go like this, and I was like, it was a nightmare. I started bawling my eyes oh, out. No. Where was the tooth? I didn't know. In, in the, the trash was at it? that point. I had, it was in the sandwich, I threw it out. But I didn't know what my natural tooth looked like underneath because they, they shave it down and I was just oh, I was crazy. traumatized. The and... other question I have though is who's the gentleman in the back? Oh, that was my coworker, Sean. He was oh, laughing, I had to go, t he was la he he almost peed his pants. <laughs> he was laughing so hard and I, I'm i I'm not kidding you. I was just home uh, this past weekend in Michigan and my friends literally brought up this story. Right. It's like the photo that I'll never erase from my phone even right. though I don't really want it to see the light of day. But uh, oh, you guys brought it out of I me. love it. Brianna, you're up. Let's see your photo. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't really find one, uh, but I oh, found one life. that's just like, I don't understand really what's going on there. You're oh. not missing a tooth, but you're missing a shoe. I'm missing oh. a shoe. And I've got on like hospital socks or something with flip flops. With flip -flops. I don't really know, yeah. Is this, someone in the background throwing up? No, that's this was up? while I was in film school. So we were like on a set. It was oh late. We've been God. working for like probably like 14 hours. So we're all but, delirious. <laughs> there, is... She's leaning over a camera to the left, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is a tripod. I see yeah, that. It's a camera. Yeah. This is such a good one because who knows what's going on and who knows why you're making that face. Who knows where your other sandal is? But yeah. you can't delete it. That's memories right there of your youth. I know. I can't get rid of it. It just it just reminds me of a simpler time, you know. I believe that. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, that was really well, good. Well, thank God we've all got it together now, which is questionable. My photo was literally from like two weeks ago. Still figuring it out, but I'll get there, guys. If you have uh, questionable photos on your phone that you that. can't delete, share them, guys. Let's tweet them out. Get them out in the world. It's fun. I feel free. I, I don't. You don't? I feel like I'm it's going to haunt me. Thanks for being a it's sport. It's okay. It's okay. All right, guys. All thanks right. for watching the download. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. Bye.